Hello, welcome back to Prep Station Physics. Um, this is a continuation from where we stop. Um, remember the last time I took you through definition of waves, and then I also took you through how to describe waves when considering the material for propagation, which I mentioned uh, mechanical waves, electromagnetic waves. And then I also took you through direction for propagation, which I also mentioned transverse waves and what longitudinal waves. All right, now we have done all of that. Now we want to go into the properties of waves. Properties of waves. Now, how do you identify waves? What are those properties that you will look at and say, okay, yep, what I'm seeing is actually the exhibition of waves, okay? So there are five properties of waves. Let me write them down before I go through it one after the other, okay? Properties of waves, five. Properties of waves. I said there are five, okay? So number one, we have reflection, reflection. I'm going to explain all of these one after the other. Now, number two, we have refraction, refraction. And then number three, we have diffraction, diffraction. And then number four, we have um, interference, interference. And then number five, remember I told you there are five properties. We have polarization, polarization. So how many? Five in numbers. Yep, so let's start with diffraction as the first. Okay, remember I gave you five. I gave you five, reflection, refraction, diffraction, interference, and polarization. So we want to start with one. So in this section, I'm going to take diffraction. In the next section, I will take interference, okay? And then in the next section, I'm going to take um, either reflection or refraction. So let's start with diffraction. What is diffraction? What is it all about, okay? Now, the diagram you are looking at right now on the screen is called a ripple tank, okay? A ripple tank. A ripple tank is um, a laboratory device we use in the lab to do what? To study waves, to study the properties of waves. With a ripple tank, you can study properties like reflection, refraction, interference, and even diffraction, okay? Now, the ripple tank consists of um, other components that made uh, it easier for you, know, you to be able to study waves, okay? Let's look at it quickly. Now, a ripple tank produces water waves that can be reflected and diffracted. It produces water waves that can be reflected and diffracted. Now, what you have here is called the diaper, okay, or deeper, okay? Now, the function of that is to create a pulse. Remember, in the last series, I explained what is pulse. I explained what is disturbance, okay? So the ripple tank consists of a tank, as the name implies. It has water in it. So you need a deeper to create what? Pulse. If you allow the deeper to enter once, it will create pulse. And of course, you know, to create disturbances, you must continue repeatedly. I explained that in the last series. So continuous you know, uh, uh, pulse being created by the deeper can create what? Series of waves. And that series of waves generated from it, we can study all the properties of waves apart from polarization, okay? The other four properties can be studied using ripple tank. Now, it's a device used to study the behavior of waves. Behavior there refers to what? The characteristics of waves, okay? Which is also, also uh, close to what I'm saying, properties of waves. 
because all waves behave in a similar manner. Wow. All waves behave in a similar manner. So that is to say, if you are talking about mechanical waves, electromagnetic waves, or transverse and longitudinal, depending on which uh, medium of classification you want to consider, whether uh, material for propagation or direction of propagation, they have what? Similar. Similar there does not mean they are the same, but close range in terms of uh, behavior, in terms of characteristics. So what happened with the ripple tank? Now, see what will happen with the animation. I'm going to animate this. This is the deeper. Now, if you touch the deeper, the deeper will generate wave. The black lines represent the movement of the waves. Okay, now what we have here, why we have um, horizontal lines is because the deeper is actually rectangular. So the nature of waves you get in a ripple tank depends on the deeper. If the deeper is rectangular, like what you are seeing now, it's going to create what is called plane waves. If the deeper is a sphere, maybe a round ball, okay, a round object, it's going to create what is called spherical waves. So the wave front depends on the nature of the deeper. So in this animation, what I have here is a rectangular deeper. So it produces what? Plane waves, straight line waves. Now, paddle vibrates to produce waves. Vibrates there means it keeps going up and down, up and down, back and forth to do what? To create multiple pulses. A single pulse, mm, but multiple disturbance. And what is wave? Disturbance in a medium to do what? To transfer energy. But right here, we are studying the properties of waves. So let's move forward. Now, paddle vibrates to produce waves. Now, how do we use this to explain reflection? Now, see what I'm going to do. What do you think will happen if a barrier is placed in front of the water waves? What do you think will happen? This is still the same ripple tank. The paddle is there to generate the wave, but this time around, there is a barrier inside the ripple tank. Now, watch and see, then tell me what will happen. Are you ready for that? Now, watch this. The black lines represent the waves that has been generated. Now, what did you notice? Just look at that. What did you notice? Now, it is a plain barrier that the waves are reflect. If it is a plain barrier, then the waves are reflected. Did you get that? What was generated was plain waves. And if the barrier is a plain barrier, what will you get? Reflection. Now, what did you notice? Look at the direction of the reflection. What did you notice? Now, the waves generated were coming down. What happened to the reflection? It was going up in opposite direction. Now, what does that mean? It means the waves bounces back. Okay, so that explains reflection. What is reflection? It is the bouncing back of waves when it comes across what? A barrier. Reflection is what? The bouncing back of waves. I've just demonstrated that now in this animation. The bouncing back of waves. Now, the waves were generated by the paddle. You saw that, the straight plane lines. But what happened? It bounces back. That is reflection. And this, can go in any way. We can also use this to explain light waves. We can use this to explain sound waves. Now, how does re reflection plays out in light? When you look at the mirror and you see yourself, that is reflection, <clears throat> okay? Now, that is the bouncing back of light waves. You stand in front of the mirror and then you are able to see your image. That is reflection. Remember, it's not every glass material that can show your image. Because when it comes to light, there are three optical material. Number one is called transparent material. Number two is called translucent. And number three is called opaque material. Now, if you stand in front of a transparent material, a glass, okay, you will not see your image. Because why? The wave has been transmitted through the material. Now, if you stand in front of a translucent material, you may not get your full image because in translucent material, part of the wave will be transmitted and part will be reflected. But if you stand in front of an opaque material, for example, a glass 
that has been coated with silver, you are definitely going to get your full image. Why? Because every of the light wave transmitted from you bounces back to you. That is why you are able to see yourself. Now, how does reflection play out in sound? The reflection of sound waves is what is called echo, 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 E-C-H-O, echo. Now, if you are in a valley or close to where there are mountains, whenever you say anything, you will hear the feedback. You will hear yourself. That is echo. Now, if you are in a big hall, maybe an empty hall without curtains, without chairs and all of that, whenever you say something, you will hear the feedback. Reason being that the sound waves from your, uh, from your, uh, the waves from your sound that is being generated strike the walls, strike the floor or any part of the building and then it's being reflected back. Why? Because the walls is what? The wall is opaque. So the sound will be reflected. And of course, if you have multiple feedback, which is also known as multiple echo, it means there are many surfaces. In that case, we have what is called reverberation. So multiple echo is called reverberation. And that is the reason when you go to a studio, a recording studio, you will always see part on the walls, okay? The part on the walls are to do what? Are to prevent reverberation. That is echo. Now, all of that are application of what? Reflection. Now, let's, let's move a little bit forward. I'm taking this gradually so that you can understand what I'm saying. Now, what do you think will happen if a block is submerged in the ripple tank? If a block is submerged in the ripple tank, what will happen? Now, let's look at that. The change in depth of the water causes a change in the speed of waves. They are refracted. Now, if a block is submerged in the ripple tank, what will happen? Now, when you submerge a block in the ripple tank, what happens is that you have just reduced the depth of the ripple tank. You have just reduced the depth of the ripple tank. That means the depth is going to be, you know, lower than what it was before. And once that happens, there will be what? Refraction. Now, what is refraction? Now, when the ripple tank was without the block submerging it, there was no problem. But after submerging the block, what happened? There was a change in the speed of the sound. How do you know that there is a change in the speed of the sound? You will notice that by the wave front. Um, you will also notice that by the quality of the sound. Now, refraction has to do with what? Density. Density. Is it, it is actually a phenomenon that occur when like waves, okay, not just light, even sound waves, when waves uh, get to the boundary of two media of different densities, okay? Once you have wave traveling across the uh, boundary of two different densities, there's bound to be what? Refraction. Uh, I want to believe you got that. Now, everything I'm trying to do here, I'm trying to use the ripple tank just to illustrate how you can use the ripple tank to do what? To study waves in the laboratory. Yes, I know sometimes uh, we, there's this misconception about waves that is an abstract uh, topic in physics because you're actually studying what you can see. No. Now, the, the beauty of prep station is to ensure that all those abstract topics, okay, we bring it down to the level of, I mean, a very simple layman understanding, permit me to use that word. So with a ripple tank, even if you have it at home, you can use it to study the properties of waves. I've just illustrated how to use it for what? For reflection. I've also illustrated how to use it for refraction. Now I'm going to illustrate how to use it for what? Diffraction. By the way, what is diffraction? Okay, maybe I'll have to write it down before I start. Now, diffraction is the bending over of waves when it comes close to an obstacle on its path, which means wave to some extent is unstoppable, okay? Now, depending on the wavelength, depending on the frequency of the wave, whenever a wave encounter obstacle in its path, Waves has the ability to do what? To bend over the obstacle. And again, waves has the ability to pass through a narrow opening. 
we call slits, okay? Waves can pass through a narrow opening called slit. That is what I'm trying to illustrate here. So diffraction is the ability of waves to bend around an obstacle and continue its journey or to pass through a narrow opening called slit and then diffract. Diffract there means spread out. After passing through the narrow hole, it will spread out. Okay, that is why if you are driving a car and you are playing music inside a car, somebody outside can still hear the music. Why? Because no matter how you close the door of your car, okay, or no matter how you close the door to your house, there is still 0.05 millimeter opening that you cannot see. So sound has the ability to diffract. It can diffract through that little opening, and then after then, what happened? It spread out and then still uh, retain its uh, journey. Okay, so let me quickly illustrate how to do that. Remember, I use this for refraction by doing what? Changing the depth of the ripple tank, okay? We have also used this to demonstrate um, reflection by doing what? Placing a barrier in front of the wave. Now, we want to use it to demonstrate what? Diffraction. And I've just told you, diffraction is the ability of wave to do what? To bend around an obstacle, number one. And then number two, to spread out after passing through a narrow opening called slit. Now, look at this diagram. You have two, um, two barrier there, okay? Two orange barrier, and there is a little opening. Now I'm going to generate the waves and let's see if the wave will pass through. I hope you are paying attention. Just look at this. Now it depends upon the size of the gap. Okay, it depends upon the size of the gap. If the gap is smaller than the wavelength of the waves, what do you think will happen? Okay, now diffraction has conditions and those conditions are what? There are two. Number one, the um, smaller the opening, the more the diffraction, the more the wave will spread out. Diffraction means spreading out. So the smaller the opening, the more the wave is going to diffract. That is one. And then the longer the wavelength, the wavelength is um, actually directly proportional Why the slit is inversely proportional. What do I mean? If you decrease the slit, more diffraction. If you increase the wavelength, more diffraction. Hope you got that. Let me say that again. If you decrease the wavelength, less diffraction, okay? Now, if you increase the slit, less diffraction, inverse proportion, okay? Now, it depends on the size of the gap. If the gap is smaller than the wavelength of the waves, what do you think will happen? I think I've just explained that. If the gap is smaller than the wavelength, because the wavelength and the diffraction rate is directly proportional. So if the gap is smaller, I don't think there will be diffraction. Now look at that, look at the animation. I've generated the waves. The waves are traveling. It gets to the barrier. What happened is reflected back. The waves are reflected back. Why? I just gave you something. I said inverse proportion. Let me write it down, okay? Inverse proportion. I said wavelengths, wavelength is what in direct proportion, why the slit is inverse proportion. So if the barrier is smaller than the wavelength, nothing will happen. The wave will reflect back. But if the gap is the same as the wavelength or bigger, something will happen. I hope you got that, okay? I'm taking my time to explain this. Thank you very much for uh, paying attention. We'll be back in a few minutes. Thank you.